Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you how to use MIDI CC data from Ableton Live to control and animate a post-processing chain inside of cables. This is the third part of an ongoing tutorial series, and I'd just like to give a quick shout out to everybody for all the positivity and all the feedback that we got. It's been really good and overwhelming. So anytime you've got something good or bad to say, including criticism, please put it there under the video I'll put it on the forums. So let's get started. So I'm going to go over here to the MIDI in device. I'm going to go to the CC output. I'm going to pull this here. And then I'm going to make a MIDI CC op. It reads a CC value from a controller. So I'm just going to move it over here. As you can see, we're a bit tight on space today, and I want to just make it all as visible as possible. So what I want to do is I want to use like this Voronoise effect to displace pixels on the screen. That's the easiest way to say it. So I'm going to disconnect this texture, go over here, and I'm going to make an image compose. Let's go there. I'm going to make a Voronoise. That's here, the texture effect. And I'm now going to plug that output into the full screen rectangle. So we get a preview here. So if I go to Voronoise and I just use the movement, as you can see, I'm moving things around. And time does this. Okay, you know, time is actually the better thing to animate. So I'm going to just leave movement on, say, 0 0.3. I'm going to put a number on 5. And this allows me to change the amount of cells that are on the screen. So I'm just going to put on 5 for now. Okay, so if I do this with time, I get some really cool, simple effects, right? So I want to animate that with live. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say Insert MIDI Track. You can do Control-Shift-T. You can also go to the Create menu. I find it important to label my stuff so it's clear what's going on. So I right click, rename, and I say Voroi time. And actually, let's put in the CC number, CC14. I'm going to double click here and make a new clip. I'm going to click the envelope button twice so I get to the envelope view. Now I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to go to CC14. That's what I'm going to draw into. I click once here to make a breakpoint, that little dot there, and I click again here, and I'm going to drag it up. And now I'm going to press play. So I click back on the MIDI CC up. We've not mapped the CC index yet. So if I put it on 14, scroll down. Ah, one last thing, we have to send the MIDI out. So here, MIDI out, I set to loop MIDI port on Mac, IC virtual MIDI driver. And here we can see that the envelope on the right hand side is coming into cables, nice, quick and easy. We could normalize it between a zero and one um, range. Um, and we can also put it on minus one to one. So I'm going to put it on zero to one. So now I'm just going to plug this straight into Voronoise and I'm going to plug it into time. And as you can see, this envelope here now is animating this there. So I actually want to just swap this around a little bit. I want to do it like this. I just want to show you how quick and easy this is. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to press Control and the up arrow key. This doubles the, the length of the loop. So as you can see, envelope, nothing. So now I want to make a new breakpoint, and I'm just going to move it up to, say, here. All right, so we've just created our own first simple animation from Ableton to Cables. It's really that simple and that easy. So I'm just going to label this, and I'm going to call it 1. Now, something you're going to see me do more often in this tutorial is I'm going to like click on a clip and press Control-D. You can right-click to duplicate, and then I'm going to rename this with Control-R, call it 2. And this is the thing you're going to see me do. So if I press Control-2 and Control-1, I change the grid resolution, as you can see. And if I press B, I can swap between the pencil. So now I want to do this, just to show you what's happening. I'm going to press Play, and watch what happens. So now I'm going to press Stop, and I'm going to press Play. And as you can see, it's kind of like we've made it animate on the downbeat of the kick and the snare. So I could press Control-1 now, Control-1 again, and I could do some really little simple effects like this. As you can see, it just swapped there at the end a little bit. I'm not saying it's very pretty, but it's just to show it. So now I'm going to do this. Okay, so I can swap now between this clip or this one. 
Okay. And that's the very basic of everything we're gonna do today with more channels. We can just recreate more and more envelopes and more clips. I could grab this here now, Control C, Control V. I could press play. Control two a few, uh, Control one a few, sorry. Control two a few times. Control one, let's get it like this. And I could now just draw out something like this. And we get a mix between these jumps and these ramps. So this is just to try and show you how quickly and easy it is to get creative the moment you get going. So we've animated the Voronoise, that's great. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna animate the amount of um, cells there. So if I put this on say 70, uh, sorry, 70, I get a lot of cells. If I put it on five, I get a few, put it on 30. So let's do five, 30, and 60, okay? So I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna press stop. So first of all, I'm going to make a new MIDI op. So do Control C, Control V, and I just want to use the next MIDI CC. Connect the MIDI event through, and now I'm going to put this on 15, and I'm going to put the normalize to none. I actually want values between 0 and 127. I go here and I right click, I insert a MIDI track, and I'm going to rename this Voro Cells CC15. So I'm going to go here. Turn the envelope on and off so I get this. I'm going to pick CC15. Press B, click here, Control 2, 2, 2, 2, B. So I can just do this, one big line. So I'm going to pull this down to, say, near 5. And I'm going to rename this 5. I'm going to duplicate this with Control D. And now I'm going to move this up to, say, 30. And I'm going to rename it 30. You want to rename your stuff, everyone, because this can get tricky to remember later on. And this one I'm now going to move up to, say, 80. Rename 80. So this time I remember to set the MIDI output to loop MIDI port. So let's see what happens here. So I have my MIDI CC up. Um, so on CC15, I get the value out. And I'm going to plug that into num, which is the number of cells. If I now press play with 5. I get this. If I click here now and press play, I get 30. If I go here and press this, I get 80. One quick thing, I'm gonna put the global quantum size on one bar. So it takes a little bit longer to swap over, as you can see there. It's a, a lot easier to keep things in time then. So as you can see, I've already started making these basic combinations so I can get envelope one and get 80 of them. Press play. And then I'm mixing those two together. I could click on five and this envelope and do this. And then I get this kind of thing happening. So as you can see, like Ableton Live is an incredibly powerful live um, tool. It's just made to make live um, content and uh, jamming just way easier. Uh, it's just my favorite sequencer, basically. So let's get, let's, let's get back on track, getting a little bit off track there. So this is like really cool. This is a basic change. So now I want to display stuff, right? So I'm going to go over here. I'll just press stop. So I need another chain. So I'm going to get this and then move it, tidy it up a bit. And then just pull out here. And I'm going to grab an image compose. And first of all, I want to recreate the original look with the cube. So for this, I need a draw image. If you're not following image compose and draw image because you're just uh, drawing cables, go to the bite size playlist that we have and it'll make it all clear. So I'm going to disconnect the Voronoise, okay? I'm just going to grab the original texture with the cube, plug it into the draw image, and the output here goes to full screen rectangle. And if I now press play, we've got the patch from the previous um, tutorial video. So now what I want to do is I want to use this black and white um, texture to displace the pixels. So I'm going to go here and I'm now going to grab the pixel displacement up. Okay. And I'm now going to plug this into there. Now I'm going to press play and nothing will happen yet. I'll show you why. So pixel displacement, let's move this out of touch, has an amount X and an amount Y. So look, I'm getting this texture here and I'm plugging it into there. Okay. Let's just get a slope so we've got some animation. So that's coming in here, right? This black and white section. If it's white, the more white it is, the more it gets displaced. So I'm going to turn this up to say 0 0.1 on the X axis and this on 0 0.1. And look what's happening. We're using this texture here to, to displace the pixels on the screen. Really cool effect. So we could now 
put it on 80 cells. And as you can see, it gets really, really busy. This is just like, you can go wild from here. If you followed it so far and you're, you're following this, you're, you're already there. It's just a question of time of experiment and then finding the things that you like to do. So I'm gonna put this on say 30 cells. Okay, and let me just press stop here. So what do I wanna do? Um, I wanna animate, um, I want to animate the, sorry, one moment. Yeah, so I just actually, I think this is okay. What I want to do is I just want to animate the amount of this, like when it's on or off. That's a thing you'll want to do a lot if you're um, VJing or something like that. Sometimes you want an effect off and on. So let's like just build that right now. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to make a MIDI track and I'm going to call it FX amount CC16. I'm going to make a clip. So first of all, let's make it where this goes off, okay? So I'm going to grab a MIDI CC up, move it over here, grab the event, plug it in, get the value out, and I'm going to plug it into amount. Okay, as you can see, it's now gone. So we're going to put normalize to zero to one because amount doesn't go higher than that. And I go here now, click the envelope twice, press B to get rid of the pencil. Sorry, I need B again. I'm going to get a really high resolution and watch what's going to happen now. Oh, that was pitch bend. My bad. Let's make a clip again. I need to go to CC16. Okay. Control 2. And here we go. I'm doing this now. Control 2 one more time. So if I press play on this, set the MIDI output to loop MIDI part. Put this to 16. Okay. So as you can see, when I've moved this all the way up, the effect is on. I'm gonna pull it down, it's off. So let's just like make this a lighter color and call this FX off. Let's do Control D and duplicate it and now pull this up, press play on it and rename it FX on. That's like the two basic things here. So I could just move these up here now and I can select all of these parts here and do control E and remove the stop buttons. So now I can say FX off, FX on. Okay, so let's get it a little bit more interesting. Control C, control V. So I'm gonna press control one. So I get this resolution back, see? And I'm gonna just make it turn on and off. So if I do this now, as you can see, it's kind of turning on and off in time with the beat. So now I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm not going to bother renaming it. I'll go here, press B. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click away this and click away this. And I get this weird blending pattern. Not a big fan of that actually, so let's put it back. So I'm going to do B here. Pull it up like this and we get this kind of like weird faded effect. Okay. So... Let's just put it on for now. So now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna create a blur op. And this is like crazy much, right? So we're gonna get this output from zero to one and I'm gonna plug that also into amount. And the thing is, everything becomes blurry, but I don't want that. I only want it to become blurry if there's foreign noise. So we have a, a mask input. And the easiest way to say this is, if it's white, it blurs, and if it's black, it's not. So watch what happens if I plug this in. Let's just, let's just leave this on for now. So I'm going to put it on, on, so it's on the whole time. And now not everything in the image is blurred. It depends on the Voronoise. So now I'm going to go over here and I think, you know what? I'm just going to tweak this a little bit more. So I'm going to get an edge detection. Okay. As you can see, I've already got a really different effect now. And I'm going to turn the amount down. And as you can see, it's kind of like adding this white outline to things, right? And it's just making it look a little bit more stylized. Like, I like the way this is going. So let's put it on like 0 0.3. Yeah, this just looks and feels a little bit better. So I'm actually just going to grab FX on and I'm going to put it here. And I'm just going to copy it two or three times. So there's a little really cool thing here in Ableton Live called follow actions. And I'm not going to go into it too much because uh, that's a separate tutorial that's more Ableton related. But if I now go here to a clip and I click L for launch mode, we have here a follow action, right? So I'm just going to do everything on random now. I'm going to click all these with shift select and I'm going to say other. 
And if I press stop now, watch what happens. I'm going to press play here, and it's going to pick a different clip to play, okay? Great, so this we can apply over here. So I'm just going to select them all, and I'm going to say follow action to any. And we're right near the end of the tutorial. I just wanted to squeeze this one in so you know. So I'm going to click here on the scene, and I'm going to trigger all of these together. And watch what happens now. As you can see, it's going to all pick a different clip. So now I'm going to make this a bit bigger, because we're right at the end of the tutorial. Now this is really, this is like a really basic example, the part I've been working on myself. I really sat here and I tweaked and worked out all of these envelopes. Like I really made a lot of different ones with timings and staggered step jumps. But this is already more than enough to show you how to get started with using MIDI CC data from Ableton to drive things inside of cables. We've got a huge amount of post effects and texture generators. The sky's the limit. You can go absolutely crazy with this. You could also map your own MIDI controller like a launch pad or push to Ableton Live so you can do manual control and you can also put it like what it's doing now, this sort of like semi-random generative output. So I've probably been talking far too long with this tutorial, but I really just wanted to make everything really clear to everybody out there. So I'd like to say a big thank you for watching. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm really going to go way more in depth into this and just show like more techniques to control and to tame this data. I'm also going to try and get like some kind of camera set up so you guys can see what I'm doing with my hand. And it's just going to be showing you more how you could actually use Ableton to um, drive a program like um, cables to do some VJing, for example. So I'd like to say thank you for watching. I hope it's been a good one. If you've got any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.